Good evening, people. Seems like uh, we are a few in the, in the room. Okay, so um, in this presentation, I'm going to introduce you to a brief, to a small brief about the current state of the business model as applied with the blockchain. With some ideas about the potential, sorry, with some ideas about the potential uh, uses of the blockchain, as as have been applied right now, and also a few hints about the direction I believe is is, is taking. So, um, first a bit of background. During 2017 and 2018, there was a like like a cambrian explosion of blockchain startups, mostly fed by by tokens, and the growth was basically led uh, lead by the, the ICO operations, uh, probably mm, there were like a thousands of blockchains and startups all over the world. But after the, the big explosion came, the big crash, the massive extinction, and I think there's no real calculations out there about the, how many blockchain startups closed, but I think that could be reasonable to calculate that more, uh, far more than a half of the blockchain startups closed because of the bear market. Uh, there are many, there are many uh, reasons for that. I think the most important for me is first, and from my experience, is that first, all these startups had like uh, unsurmountable financial constraints. Um, there was a, like, a general problem out there that uh, um, many startups couldn't cash out the crypto into a bank account because they couldn't open a bank account in many countries. This was the case, for instance, for many European countries and also for many places in the US. And because of that, uh, they basically they were paying everything with, with crypto. And when the bear market come by, they basically lost most of the of the coins and, and they they had to close. Uh, there's another reason I think is the lack of expertise. The blockchain is a new technology, and not a lot of people know understand how to work with that. And also, the technology was not, wasn't really mature during this period. So many people basically faced uh, dead end with the technology, and they were continually pushing the delivery forward. And this is uh, another reason for the for the um, failure of many people. And also, I think that uh, most of the people, if you if you remember the white, white paper from two years or one year ago, most of the people were saying, "Okay, we are going to decentralize whatever, probably everything, and this is our business model." But in fact, it wasn't. That there wasn't like a real business model in, in many cases and people were trying to basically raise money for the IC, uh, the, with the ICO just on a white paper maybe some kind of prototype that was slightly functional um, and a very, very small minority of startups really have a proper business model so basically 2017 and 2018 was vaporware in my opinion most of the people were vaporware out there but also it wasn't everything lost. Uh, there was a, like a bit of, of the real thing. It was like a needle in a stack. But some people actually built something and some people endured the crypto winter. And these people and these companies are uh, leading the way in terms of business and they are teaching everybody how to create a business model, a proper business model over the blockchain that profits, that create profits, pay salaries, pay bills, get the real clients and it has the potential to grow. And this is uh, what I'm going to explain in a, in a while. I think that also we'd like to f say a few, a few words about adoption. I think that adoption is still far, far away. If you go to that radar, you will check that uh, for the open networks, most of the dApps have a really small, uh, really a small amount of users and they don't not, they're not moving a lot of money. And for instance, EOS and Tron have more users than Ethereum, that is something Surprisingly, it's, it's happening. So this is also, I, I don't know whether these rankings in that radar are right or, or, or not, but it's, um, it's interesting to check that uh, people were, uh, the real adoption is still not there, and that all these um, speeches about the blockchain taking, uh, assaulting the, the mass adoption during the next two years were basically wrong. No? So there is the, still a lot of way, a lot of work to be done and a long way ahead. And I think that in terms of real adoption, uh, permission or semi-permission networks, 
as the ones built with hyperlayer right now are taking more, more adoption, especially in the corporate world. The corporations are not really happy adapting open networks right now because of many reasons, scalability, privacy, and also some involved risk, some risk involved with open networks. But uh, they are building many proof of concepts and MVP on permissioned or semi-permissioned networks. If you, if you talk with blockchain developers all out there that are working with big corporations, many of them will, will explain you that basically they are using this kind of permissioned or permissioned networks to build whatever they, they are meant to. So um, let's jump into the into the business model part of this speech, uh, of this keynote, and I would like to go through the theory of the business model for the blockchain. A blockchain, basically, in terms of business model, is a enhanced platform. It's um, a platform. You, you have the definition here. A platform is a business based on enabling value creation, creation interaction between the users. And basically, the platform is the infra uh, setup, the infrastructure for that, and tries to consume consume the matches between the people. Uh, the value, the value created, uh, comes from the uh, the interaction of the both the producers and the buyers, or the service providers and the users. But always, the value comes from the interaction. It's not like a pipeline business model, uh, business model where, for instance, I I, I I'm a car, car, manufact, a car maker, I produce a car and I sell the car to a customer, and that's it. No? We are, uh, a platform basically connects people, and from this connection and interaction, the value is produced. Uh, and, the value, and the platforms are based on in network effects. Network effects can be calculated following the Metcalf law. The, the Metcalf law, you have the description there, was uh, created to calculate the growth rate of IT networks. For instance, if you have one, just one phone and you are the only person with a phone, uh, there's no value in your phone. But if people started to get more phones, the interactions are going to grow exponentially, not like in, in linear, linearly, and this will, uh, will create a stronger network effort. So basically, these platforms are based in this, in this effect. And they could be positive or negative, they could be this, uh, double positive or double negative. We are not going into that, but if you, if you can achieve a positive network effect, uh, this means that more users will come to the, to the network, and this means more value for the user because the value comes from the interaction. So the more interaction you can make uh, within the platform, the more value for the user you will create. And a platform basically, uh, it's about a core interaction. The core interaction in a platform uh, involves three elements. The users, could be the producers and the consumers. In many platforms, the roles can be switched between the people. So you can be a producer one, uh, at one moment and you can be a consumer at, at another one. For instance, this is the case for C2C platforms where people are making, for instance, exchanging second-hand goods or something like that. Uh, you have also the value unit, which is the produce for somebody an exchange with some other, some other player. And from this, uh, the value uni unit is only variable if it's exchange. It's the case of digital money, content, goods or services, data, or whatever. And you have also the filter. It's a tool created to facilitate the, ma the matching between the players. So for instance, if you are in a marketplace, e-commerce marketplace, you will need a, a naming system to identify the, the, uh, the participants of the network, or you will also need a, a search engine to easily find whatever you're looking for. And uh, at the bottom, you, you can see that, uh, for instance, the Bitcoin network, the first blockchain network is a, a typical case of a platform. The users are the BTC network participants. It could be miners or simple users. It doesn't really care. The value unit is the Bitcoin. And the filter are no addresses and, and wallets. This is a, if you want to find somebody in the Bitcoin network, you have to use, you have to type down the, the address, okay? So you can find, find whatever, whoever you want to send a, a Bitcoin. Also, it's interesting to say that the, the bit, uh, a blockchain as an infrastructure, infrastructure is different from the typical uh, other typical platforms and brings so new features uh, in place. These features are basically tokenization. Tokenization is really important because it prevents the double spending problem. And this allows to create new digital units of value. 
before the blockchain, it was really difficult to digitize goods because you had the double spending problem. This means that you can, for instance, digitize this thing and you can sell to other piece of person, but there's no way to prevent that I can sell the same thing both. And this is solved with tokenization. Also, you have transparency, so it's much better to get information uh, about the market in the platform. One typical problem of the platform is that uh, there is a huge lack of uh, transparency and uh, this brings many market uh, inefficiencies. And this could be solved with the blockchain easily. And also you have immutability. Uh, this basically brings uh, trusted interactions. You can't change the blockchain, so whatever is done is done and you can trust that nobody can revert that. You have other advantages like pseudo-anonymity. Uh, this is different from privacy, but basically allows to easily track the performance of the different users without disguising their identity. Uh, minimal removal, as you might know, uh, uh, and better automation. You can create smart contracts to automate the interaction between the people and also to automate many things uh, regarding of uh, arbitration, scrolling, and some other fundamental aspects of every blockchain platform. So at the end, where the blockchain is bringing to into the same better network effects, unlocking more value. You can create new opportunities to create value through tokenization. You can create, you, you can run a better management of the market through a better information, and you can also improve the core transactions of every, of every platform. And I'm going, this is the theory, okay? Uh, probably you, many of you already know, understand this, but I think the most interesting part is to understand the kind of business model you can build with a blockchain or, or, or in the blockchain ecosystem. I think there, from my perspective, there are four kind of business you can build using the blockchain. The first one is platform creation. Basically, is you create like a base layer of the, uh, you create a base layer platform where um, uh, with a smart contracts, uh, with a basic token and all these things. You can also, create a value, uh, you can also build a value creation a product. It's a, um, it's a product that basically creates tokens over the basic blockchain. So you can allow, you can unlock more value and people can exchange more things in, in the same blockchain. You can create a service. Uh, if you think about uh, like a regular um, marketplace, for instance, like Amazon, um, over the occurring interaction, which is the exchange of goods, you have like a messaging, you have a scrolling, arbitration, you have financial services. This is not, this is uh, services are meant to help uh, create trust and help the users to exchange the basic value unit. So in the blockchain, you can also create this kind of services for the users using, for instance, the Ethereum network or the Bitcoin network. And finally, you have a feature enablement. You can also take some specific traits of the blockchain and without relying on the network effect, you can provide also a service. And I'm going to give some examples of that. For instance, for platform creation, um, you have many, many solutions out there. You can build a protocol based layer like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Definity, Eternity, Polkadot, whatever. You can create, uh, you can be a miner, a pool miner. You can create a staking as a service uh, company. This is a, probably has a lot of future because everybody's moving to staking. So staking as a service could be could be a really profitable business. You can create the scaling solutions on top of base layer blockchains, and also you can create cross chains interoper interoperability solutions or decentralized storage solutions like IPFS. IPFS. Many people are using IPFS like a complement for Ethereum, for instance. They are not storing everything on Ethereum, they're using it by IPFS combined with Ethereum. And you can also create like a blockchain as a service like Kaleido. You can allow people to create with a few clicks a private blockchain for whatever they want. I think that we can discuss whether this is a blockchain or not, but it is still there and it's called blockchain as a service. And all these companies, uh, uh, basically, they are building the base layer of the um, of the ecosystem. They are the platform creators. You have also in this in this regard, there are, this is a big trend right now that is crea creating a specialized blockchain for supply chain and especially for IoT. IoT 
and blockchain uh, combine have many advantages and people like Bitchain or Modum they are trying to create a special purpose based layer blockchains just to manage the IoT, IoT devices. Uh, value creation. I think that this, this, com this kind of companies basically are building smart contracts and tokens that create new value units to be exchanged over the blockchain. For instance, over the Ethereum, you have, we have Ethereum and ETH, but also you can create over that new tokens and new value so people can exchange that and can get some profits. Uh, usually, the, the, um, the, basics, the basics of these are basically smart contracts and tokenization. And on this, on this part, we have already many successful business and many already proven business models. For instance, tokenization is one of them. Uh, tokenization as a service is, has a lot of features, especially in regards of HCOs. Swap or DC, crypto exchanges, lending, stable coins, decentralized messaging, decentralized marketplace for tokenized, tokenized assets, loyalty solutions, supply chain tracking, payments, P2P auctions, automated insurance or gaming are some examples of value creation businesses over the base layers blockchain that are already making money, we have already clients and they are already growing as a, as a company and with suitable business models. Um, one big trend right now is, of course, finance. Finance is the most advanced field in this regard. I think it, it, it comes, it's, it's a logical consequence of, of the evolution of the technology. Bitcoin is basically a financial, so it's basically a P2P network for payments. So it's, it doesn't come as a, as a surprise that the finance world is taking the lead in the in the, in the blockchain business. Um, several companies are already building the basic blocks for creating this uh, whole ecosystem of uh, the f finance on the blockchain. I think this is really interesting to know that basically these people are exchanges, OTC, swap, payment solutions, and tokenization services, as well as um, uh, stable coins. And right now we have already um, an ecosystem mostly for trading that is working and is growing at a, a really fast pace. The second big trend right now is supply chain. The supply chain fits really, really good with the blockchain because the blockchain solves by design the bullwhip effect, which is probably the biggest problem in any supply chain. And, and many big companies as well as startups are already building solutions, working solutions over the blockchain. In the case of ABM with Maersk, uh, Provenance, ours, or Walmart, like the big uh, supermarket chain, and Wave. Uh, can you tell us what is the bullwhip effect? The bullwhip effect is um, uh, when, you li when you don't have transparency in the supply chain, for instance, if you are a factory producing goods, you can really know how, uh, how many of your goods are sold at the end of the supply chain in the shop. So you don't have a lot, uh, the right way to calculate how much do you have to produce, and then you, you risk uh, being overproduced things, which is really expensive, or you risk underproduced things, which is also really expensive. So you have fully transparency of the of the all the supply chain from the from the from A to B, and from B to C and to the end point, uh, you can really make much better calculations. Uh, this problem has to be is, is, has been solved before with really complex software solutions like vendor management inventories, etc., which are big things made by SAP or these big players. But with the blockchain, you can simply create a simple blockchain and with full transparency, and you can create like provenance a token, a supply chain token that people basically exchange the token as the real product is going through the supply chain, and you can check at every moment where the items are, whether they are sold or not and you have like a almost perfect market information with the supply chain. So this uh, has the potential to solve a huge problem for all the supply chain provider uh, companies out there. Make sense? So that's it. But, but, uh, then again, there is the uh, communication with the real world, so... With the real world? Yeah, so uh, the combination of blockchain and supply chains, um, there has to be a you know a touching point between real world data and the and the blockchain representation. Yeah, usually these companies are basically, for instance, provenance. What they're doing, they're basically every every stuff going through the supply chain is tokenized in the blockchain, and every time the 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 steps uh, moves from one 
point to another is uh, is registered in an application, like an application, and then in the blockchain is moved from one point to another. So you have also to to run applications or to use IoT devices or other kind of things to to move the information from the real world into the blockchain. That's the point. For instance, there is a, has been a proof of concept to track the um, the origin of the tuna fished in the Pacific in the Pacific Ocean and moved to Europe. And basically, every fish, every tuna fish, is tokenized in the blockchain. And when the blockchain moved from the fisherman to the uh, to the cargo ship, uh, all the tokens are moving in the app from the fisherman wallet to the cargo ship wallet, and so on. Yeah, I, I just want to say that some, someone at some point had to tokenize that fish or anything. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's, there is some level of trust there that somebody did a good job, right? Yeah, but the, the, I think this is a, um, this is a, this is a, we can start discussing whether we need uh, oracles or not for that. But this is basically supply chain uh, solutions are mostly built over semi permissioned ledgers or permissioned layers. So it, uh, and they are built with consortia. So basically, these consortia are built in a private blockchain to solve the, uh, the bull whip effect within the members of the consortia. They are not using open networks right now to do that. So the trust problem is uh, significantly, significantly lower because all, everybody knows each other. And basically, there are a few players using a blockchain to solve a problem they have. Okay. And we have a, a also, and we have a, a, a real interesting trend that is creation marketplace platforms to exchange a lot of different things tokenized for instance open bazaar is for e-commerce streaming is for data you are tokenizing data and you create a marketplace for data so everybody can tokenize their own data and they can sell that this is really interesting for instance for industrial applications for iot uh, you have Lokimo, for instance they are tokenizing a uh, real estate uh, and they are basically creating small shares of a same uh, of a real estate property so Create and creating a secondary market for that. This uh, has uh, really a bright, a bright future. And Brave, for instance, is tokenizing the attention of the people through the browser. And then they're giving people tokens that are basically vouchers they can exchange in Amazon, Walmart, or other kind of, of shops. So this is the, the way the, the business models are being built here on the blockchain. And uh, we can move into the third part, which is service enablement. enablement. Um, these people, these companies are basically building things that are useful to facilitate the exchange of value in the platform. They're not creating value themselves, but they're facilitating the, the value. For instance, reputation management systems, decentralized reputation management systems, they are doing the same uh, people does in, for instance, in Amazon or in Uber, but in a decentralized way for the blockchain. Personal data management, asset custody like wallets, I'm thinking about hard wallets, the hard wallets ledger, this is a service. It doesn't really help people to, to move value in the blockchain, but it helps people to store the value in the blockchain before moving that or after moving the value. Oracles is a big example. The oracles are super interesting and super, uh, su and super needed in the blockchain right now. Fundraise tracking, decentralized messaging, this is all could be also included here. Like you have to think, for instance, in a marketplace where people can uh, use, uh, message them, uh, each other. Uh, but in the blockchain, you need also some, something like that. So people are already building that. KWC management, smart contract security, preferred location for supply chain, for instance, there are services for that. Transaction privacy, etc. For instance, we have examples like the Aster protocol, which is for privacy. This is really interesting for the financial services where you need the blockchain, you need privacy over the blockchain. You don't need to, you have to protect the wallets of the people so nobody can really check the uh, real amount of funds you have in your wallet. This is really important for finance. You have oracles, really important also to, to manage data and to automate operations in the blockchain and you have something like arbitration services like decentralized arbitration like Kleros. And the last trend is, the is uh, probably um, ID management but uh, with a special trend which is a uh, certification management. There are several companies out there trying to use just the cryptography part of the blockchain to uh, create digital certificates and to sell the solution to other companies. So, where are we going? I think that people are still exploring. Uh, 
Uh, and we are st still trying to build better, bigger and more efficient network effects with more value unlock and more services. Uh, and this is happening even during the crypto winter. And for instance, I think that one good idea could be building cross-platform network effects. For instance, do you know Shelf Network? Shelf Network is a distribu distributed au au auction network, has been working for a while, for almost two years in Ukraine, Eastern countries, and basically it's like an au auction a system for cars, like an eBay for cars, but decentralized. So you, the network effect is not in a single interface like all, you can only access through eBay, but you can access through all the interface connected th to the same blockchain. So you are creating like a decentralized network effect, allowing everybody to connect to the network effect without a, creating a centralized point of access. This is really interesting, has been successful, and it's really something really interesting to explore in many places because you can create bigger and stronger network effects. Uh, other other example, you have a link there from nfx.com. These guys are from San Francisco. Are, they have really interesting ideas about network effects. And also, you can start creating nested network effects because in a blockchain, the network effect is in the blockchain itself. It's open, so you can create a network effect for finance, for instance, for a financial service, and the same user can uh, connect in the blockchain to another network effect, let's say for e-commerce. And this, both network effects created for finance and e-commerce can communicate to each other. Because uh, let's, see, let's think about the, a situation where a Stripe is communicating with Amazon without an API and without Amazon or a Stripe controlling that communication. Makes sense. So this, we can start building nets, nets, nets network effects. Like for instance, when somebody use a Bitcoin to, as a payment method for e-commerce, like in OpenBazaar. Basically, this is nested network effects, and it's really interesting to create this new thing, this new world of decentralized blockchains. And finally, I think that um, we're still at the beginning of adoption, and I do believe that we need to start thinking about uh, business modeling seriously in the blockchain ecosystem, rather than start building from the scratch a solution that uh, afterwards, we have to work, look for the client. We can start designing something that the client really need in order to get real adoption. Because a big problem has been that people were building something that didn't really have clients or didn't really provide value to the, to the customers. And we need to revert that idea and start thinking about how to create the best platforms on the blockchain for the people, how to connect the platforms to themselves, how to create a network effect that really unlock more value to, to, to the potential customers. I think that these kind of questions are really important to, to push forward the, the, um, the modeling of business model using the blockchain. So this is, this is all. I think that you can find me in my, this is my email, also my Twitter account. If you have any, any more questions, comments, suggestions, you can drop me a line and I will happily answer you, okay? Thank you very much.